Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and in this video, I want to show you how to use the new regex functions in Excel to solve problems I previously solved that involve pattern recognition. Let's dive straight into it, and I trust that you enjoyed the ride. This one says extract special characters from given strings. So we have these strings, and we want to extract these special characters. Okay, so the regex functions we have available to us are this. There are two ways I think you can solve the problem, and if you've watched my previous video, you probably would have heard me say it, but in this video, I'll go a little in-depth. Now, the first thing you could do is you could do regex replace and say, okay, how do I know which characters are special characters? I don't have a, a long list of that, an exhaustive list of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace everything that is either, you know, an alphabet or a digit. And I believe that I will be left with special characters. So in this case, replace A to Z, replace 0 to 9. And once I do that, whatever I'm left with, you know, those are the special characters. That's one way. The other way is you could use the extract, which is I want to extract, you know, the special characters. But you still don't know what they are. So you can say extract anything that is not A to Z and is not 0 to 9. Okay? So if it's not A to Z, if it's not 0 to 9, it's a special character and you can extract it. So, you know, it depends on how you approach it. So let's do both. Let's go with the replace first of all. Right? So we say replace and then we select the range. Now for replacement uh, pattern first, we open, you know, um, double quotes and then we say, okay, what do we want to do here? We want to replace everything that is capital A to Z, lowercase A to Z and 0 to 9 with nothing. So you open square brackets when you want to give it a list of characters. Okay. So now you can say A, B, C, D, but you don't need to do that. Just do A to Z. So that's what this means. Capital A to capital Z. Okay. And then lowercase A to lowercase Z. And you could also do 0 to 9. So this is saying any of these characters, you know, any of them, capital A to Z, lower A to Z, 0 to 9, everything, replacement, replace with nothing. Close bracket. Okay. All the answers look good except for one, which is this one that produces a hash NA. And why does it produce a hash NA? If you look at the original string, you will see that the string does not contain any alphabets or digits. Okay, so Excel is trying to replace a character it can't find. That's the problem it has here. So it's looking for A to Z or 0 to 9. It doesn't find it. And you're saying to yourself, well, if it doesn't find it, shouldn't it just return the string as is? It doesn't do that. But if you switch to Google Sheets and you use the same expression like I have used in my previous video, you see that Google Sheets, you know, returns the string as is. Okay, so yeah, who is right? Who is wrong? Well, I don't know. <laughs> But for me, I'm like, you're trying to replace the character. If you can't find the character, then yeah, you, you can't find it. So leave the string as is. But well, it's more like I'm looking for the character. I can't find it. So I give you a hash NA. But there's a way to fix it. Okay. So what you can do is this. When you put characters in square brackets, of course, the assumption here is that they are listed at least once. But because I know there's a possibility that none of these characters may be found, what I can do at the end of it is to put an asterisk. An asterisk is saying that the preceding variables you have, which is the preceding characters in all those square brackets, you know, could occur zero times, meaning it may not occur or it could occur more than that. Okay, so there's a possibility it doesn't occur and there's a possibility it occurs, but it's zero or more. So that's the meaning of asterisk. So in cases where it doesn't find it, it should be fine. So let's do an enter. Okay, and you can see that with that, you know, it works. Okay, so that's, well, a trick I tried and it worked. Now, the next thing I can decide to do is to shorten this. You know, instead of doing capital A to Z, lowercase a to Z, the regex replace has the case sensitivity, right? So look at this case sensitivity. So you can choose a case insensitive match. If you choose a case insensitive match, then it means that you don't need to say capital A to Z, lowercase a to Z. You can take one of them out. If you take any one out, it means that whether you put capital A to Z or lower A to Z, they mean basically the same thing. So this way you can reduce the expression. Okay, press enter. Your answers are still fine. Okay, so now that's shortened. Now the shortest that most people will propose to you will be rather than using this, you use a slash W. Now what does a slash W mean? A backslash W. It means um, you're looking at characters that are, you know, either A to Z, both capital A, lowercase a, and 0 to 9. So basically what I wrote before. But the only thing is that it includes an underscore. Okay? The question now is, is an underscore a special character? 
Okay, because if you say another square is a special character, then using slash w is not what you want. Why? Because if you do this, if you have an underscore character, it would also be replaced. So this is what I mean. So let's do enter here. Let's add an underscore here. Okay. If you had an underscore here now, you see it doesn't show up as a special character. But I think it should be a special character. It should show up. So that's the reason why I won't use a slash w. Okay. So instead of that, I would use, you know, what I used before, which is a to z and what? 0 to 9. Okay. So now you can see in this case, the underscore, you know, does, you know, show up. Okay. So that's um, it with regex, you know, replace. Now let's see if we wanted to do it with regex extract. Is it going to be necessarily easier? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> okay. So regex extract. So let's start that one. So now regex extract. In this case, we select, of course, the entire thing. Or well, let me start with one first. <laughs> All right. And then we now say what our pattern is. In this case, we want to extract every character that is not something, right? So what we want to do is this. We want to extract every character here that is not. When you want to say not, you use a caret within the square bracket. So when I say this and I say A to Z, so this is saying not, it's not one of A to Z, it's not one of zero to nine. So if it's not one of A to Z, it's not one of zero to nine, it's obviously a special character. Now, because I know I can use case sensitivity flag, that's why I'm not putting the lower case A to Z. So I do this, I close the bracket. Okay. Now, let me skip, you know, the return mode, or maybe I just use it immediately. If you don't put anything there, it's only going to find the first match, right? But what you need is all the matches. Let me show you this. Let's just go to case insensitive and say it's case insensitive first. Uh, let's do this. So you notice that it only gives us percentage, right? But we know that we have an ampersand there. So that's where this is important, return mode. Okay, so you need to be using, let's put this again, so we see one for all matches, all right? So now you can see that we have a percentage and an ampersand, and it's spilled this way, right? So if you want to have them, you know, together, you know, then you could basically just use a concat, right? So we just use concat, okay? And then this gives us this, right? So now that we have a concat, and we believe that we are fine, you know, you can take this down. Okay, so now here, where uh, we have London 2, you know, we seem to have a problem, right? So why is that happening? Because this one does not have any special characters, which is kind of the same way, <laughs> you know, the same problem we had in the first one. So what do you think we can do? Again, we could try using the asterisk to say that this could occur no times or it could occur more times. So let's try that and put an asterisk here and see if that fixes it. Okay, so that's that one. And let's take this down. Okay, and then it does fix it. Right, the only thing I will want to do is that rather than have, you know, the formula here and we drag down or double click down, we want the formula to spill. You know, you know I was coming there. You know I was coming there. All right, so let's make it spill. So instead of doing this, you know, you want it to go all the way down. So you basically can use a map function, right? So some things never change. So you do a map, <laughs> you select your range here. You do a lambda and you do x. x here will represent in the first instance a2, the next time a3, a4, and it will return the results for each of them that way. So where you have a2 here, you don't need this, you need x. So x will pick up what it needs. Close the lambda, close the map, boom, and we are good. So you could tackle it with regex replace, you could tackle it with regex extract. But the important thing, like you must have seen, is that you need the asterisk. The asterisk is very important to say, it's more like doing an if error in my own mind here. You know, like saying, okay, yes, this pattern could occur or not occur. So zero or more time. So it may not occur. If it doesn't occur, don't throw up an error, you know. Take it as one of those things, okay? But if it does occur, you know, then extract it or in the case of replace, replace it, okay? So I think this was a good one, you know, and we are pretty much, you know, good, yeah. Like I said, don't forget about the underscore. The underscore is the only reason why I don't use the slash W because if the underscore is a special character, then, you know, it needs to be included in my opinion. So that's all I wanted to share in this video. If you like it, hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.